So I've mentioned it a few times on this channel, but one of my goals this year was to really work on improving my environment painting skills. So I've been doing a lot more studies and paintings with environments to try and practice. And today I thought I'd share a speed paint that I did and maybe talk about some tips and things that I've learned about painting environments so far that would hopefully be helpful to you, especially if you're a beginner or just new to painting backgrounds. So one thing that I really wanted to improve in my environments is creating a sense of depth. I love artwork that has a landscape that feels expansive or like it really does go on forever. Some things that artists do to kind of create this effect is implement something called atmospheric perspective. So atmospheric perspective is something that happens when something is really far away. There's basically more atmosphere between you and the object. It kind of has a more bluish tint to it the further away it gets. So I live near the Smoky Mountains and they're a great example of this. I'll show some pictures so you can kind of see what I mean, but implementing this into your paintings can kind of help it feel like things are actually far away, even though it's just a painting. Another thing that artists do to get depth in their paintings is to have those far away things be more blurry or less focused, and things that are closer to the viewer are more crisp and have more detail. So if you think about your environments as having a foreground, midground, and background, the background is going to be blurrier, especially the further away that it is. And as I continue on this painting, I'll actually kind of have a few plants framing the bottom of the painting. This is actually going to be the foreground. So these plants are blurred, but it's just to give more focus to my midground where my character is. And that's where all the crispy detail is. So anyway, I wanted to keep those things in mind as I painted this the atmospheric perspective and just having, making sure that things are blurrier or less detailed as they get further off in the distance. Um, in this painting, I'm also working from back to the front. And so to kind of, again, keep in with that atmospheric perspective, the greens that I'm using in the hills in the far off distance are much more bluish than the ones that will be closer to the viewer as I go along. I do think that I could have pushed that even further and made them even more blue and it still would have looked fine, but yeah. And as I start working more on the midground and the trees, I start to use a lot more textured brushes to really help me quickly get down the leaves and things. So I wanted to keep the speed paint to about an hour so I didn't waste, I didn't want to waste time painting every individual leaf. Um, I think that's something that's really important to learn when you're painting environments is how can you get this point across as efficiently as possible. So if you look at some of your favorite digital artists, chances are their backgrounds are a lot more simplified than they look. So a great example of this is Sam from Sam Does Arts. If you zoom in on some of his backgrounds in his paintings, you'll notice that things are sometimes literally just a couple of scribbles. So, <laughs> but it doesn't look like that when you're looking at his paintings because he's basically perfected getting his point across of what something is without spending a long time on the details of the object. So this is something that I'm still learning to do, but I do think textured brushes can really help with this sometimes especially with organic things like leaves and bushes. I think it ultimately just takes practice, but if you're really struggling with painting environments, I highly recommend focusing on how to paint things in a simple way that still gets your point across. So you can study from your favorite artists and kind of see how they approach these things, and I think it goes a long way in improving your own artwork. And I do just quickly want to say on textured brushes, if you use Procreate, there's plenty of textured brushes that come with the software that you can try out. Sometimes it can take some experimenting and playing around with them, but I do think they can be really useful. I have bought brush sets from artists, but I've also found that artists sometimes share free brushes. So it can just take some digging around, but you don't have to go out and buy an expensive brush set. I think just working with what you have and learning how to make it work for you 
sometimes can be just as effective. And if you're looking for some free brush sets from artists, one artist that I know has a bunch of free brush sets is Devin L. Kurtz on Instagram. Um, I've mentioned them before on this channel. I think they have really great resources. Definitely check out her Instagram stories. She does a lot of tutorial paintings and things. And yeah, super helpful. But she also has a bunch of free brush sets that you can get off of her Gumroad. Highly, highly recommend. I use some of those in this painting today, but I use them a lot for, especially for like the foliage and stuff. I think it's really, really helpful. So you'll also see me check my values while I'm painting. This is where I basically turn everything into grayscale or like shades of black and white. I probably should have done this sooner in the painting, but I it is what it is. I just wanted to make sure that my character stands out even when the colors are turned off because that's where I want my viewer to look first. So when you're doing your values, you want to make sure that your focal point is still has the highest contrast around it because that's where you want the viewer to look first. So also going back to the foreground, midground and background, the background values should be fairly close together and then the midground values can have a little bit more variety. This helps kind of further define where my midground is and where my background is. Okay, and we're pretty much wrapping up the end of this painting and this video, so I just wanted to say bye. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Um, make sure to like and subscribe before you head out, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.